Silent Hill Homecoming Game Review Alex Shepard is sent back from his military unit after a short stay in the military hospital because his brother is missing, so he returns to the small town of Shepard's Glen. And yet again, we have a adult protagonist in a Silent Hill game going in search of a close relative. You know, they're gonna run out of close relatives pretty soon. Anyway, the game is not necessarily so much Silent Hill. If we define Silent Hill by what we got in the first three games, and what the fourth game was kind of a different artist's take on essentially the same subject, meaning not entirely the same, but gets the gist of it and is, you know, a nice piece in its own right, then this one is not really Silent Hill. It's got some of the ingredients pretty right, but it's more about the action. There's an outright fighting system in this, complete with dodges, counterattacks, and fast and heavy attacks. It's simpler than in a lot of games, but clearly this one is more focused on the action, the visceral, visceral excitement more than the build-up. There are those that will, ar that will argue that there is too much fighting in this game, and I might lean a bit towards that, actually. Also, the fighting system, you're going to have to learn it, because you can't even defeat the simple enemies if you're not going to dodge and, you know, take advantage of moments of vulnerability on the opponent's side. There are times where you're going up against several enemies, though I did not experience more than one enemy attacking me at the same time. They would kind of wait around very politely. You know, like in your average martial artist movie, you know, they'll just wait around, dance threateningly, and once their buddy is down, then the next one will attack you. The... It's also just more physical. I guess it's because it's a soldier this time, and one could argue that because it's more physical, that makes the tough enemies, and that's really most of them, seem more threatening because this is a soldier, he should be able to handle himself, even in this situation, which I'm not sure they quite covered in boot camp, and he still has trouble, which means, you know, these guys, yeah, they, they bring their A-game, but it's... I don't know, some, some of the physicality does take away from it, but you are, you know, you're climbing, you're crawling down, you're, you're smashing windows sometimes, you know, hacking your way with an axe through a boarded up door, you know, stuff like that. I think the biggest problem is the times when you make this really impossible seeming jump and he just barely makes it, you know, he grabs onto the edge, crawls up, and then you have to turn around and jump back and make the impossible jump the second time, possibly even the third. That just kind of takes away from the whole, man, I barely just made it and I would have died if, you know, I couldn't possibly do that again. Oh, wait, I have to do that again. The enemies are definitely some pretty darn good designs. 
I'm not going to give too many of them away. We have this... I guess it's like a spider, but it only ha does have the four limbs. And all four have these sharp blades. So it can basically attack you with these sharp blades. It can crawl on the ceiling and jump down on you. You know, th there's one really interesting portion quite early in the game, so I'm comfortable with giving it away, where you're in an elevator and some of these basically attack you from outside the elevator and you have to stab them and they'll try to defend with these blades, you know. That's quite interesting. We also have the nurses from the movie, I'll get back to that in a sec, that attack with, for those who haven't seen the movie, it's basically the one on the cover here, you know, the cleavaged, tight suit wearing, they even made her breasts bounce. I really have to wonder if they were going for making her really, you know, entirely unappealing or just slightly... I don't know. I wasn't entirely sure if I should hit it with my weapon or with something else. Come on, I'm not the only one who's thought it. And she'll basically come at you with a knife, possibly a scalpel. I can't claim that I stopped to check because the bitch is insane. She basically does not give you that much time to stand around and, you know, check if it's this or that weapon. And we also have some dogs, of course. They're probably the least interesting dogs of the series. They're basically just red. I don't mean like a bad red, though. I, it is like they've been skinned, you know. You see the, I don't know, the muscle, I guess, you know, the, the layer underneath the skin. And they've got a kind of, I don't know, lizard kind of features to their head. And their mouth is a bit like that of, like, a, a leopard, or, you know, that kind of, that family of cats. I don't know, maybe some genetic manipulation was going on there, or something. And then we have Smog, and this is kind of a variation on what we saw in the film, as far as I recall. Basically, he attacks with smoke. It is, I don't know, the mutated, blackened lungs of a chain smoker that have come back to life and are now haunting us in the manner of, you know, secondhand smoke. Basically, you gotta get close to him because at any kind of distance he's just gonna blow smoke at you and even when you do get close to him he can still really be annoying and he's moving in that kind of awkward way the same as in the movie which in turn was taken from something in I think the second game yeah anyway at this point I should maybe confront yes this does take a lot of notes from the movie but somehow, it actually kind of pulls them off. I can't explain it. It just... They, they can't seem to completely mess it up. I mean, even with the fourth one, which was strange, and there were some definite missteps, and this one, which is so different in such important ways, they still kind of get something good out of it. The... The game basically has you going around 
Shepherd's Glen, a small town, and, you know, trying to figure out where, you know, you find out that your brother is not the only one missing, other people have gone missing, and, yeah, you try to find out what the hell's going on, and, you know, there are the monsters, that's also a small detail that you're looking into, and, you know, you're going around talking to some of the people that you remember from, you know, Alex has been gone, you know, hence the title Homecoming, he's been gone for some time. He kind of left the town abruptly, and, you know, it's that kind of, you know, going back to the small town, you know, the hometown, you know, common American story. So, somehow, most of the people in this town don't seem like they're a day over 30, including the ones who have grown children. I don't know how they're doing that. Maybe they invented the perfect anti-aging cream or something. It's just really strange to see Alex talking to his catatonic mother, who does not look like she is even 10 years older than him. There are some very nice locations. We go through a infested motel hotel, really, a police station under attack, the the game does get that good balance between there not constantly being something to attack you, but also making you feel like the next attack could come at any moment, you know. You're not being attacked right now, but just wait a second, you know, they could come any time. And, you know, I, I do think that some of the fights are overly tough, and maybe also part of the problem is that the fighting is really the only challenge of the game. I mean, as for the puzzles, I hesitate to call them puzzles. That was the game thing. I would refer to them as tasks, actually. They're not puzzles. They're basic. Basically, you go into a room, there's something for you to do, and that's it. Or there's something for you to find, and then go two doors down, and there you use it. You know, there's. There were maybe two, three puzzles in the entire game where it took me more than a few minutes and where I couldn't pretty much figure it out right from the start what the solution was. And one of those, it should be mentioned, was bugged a lot, like, in two different ways. And that's really also, I mean, it might have to do with the fact that I was playing this on a computer running Windows 7, and it has been known to sometimes be a little strange, but there were several bugs with this game. It, you know, had to shut down several times. It lagged, you know, sometimes when it, right before a cutscene. All of them are in-engine or pre-rendered, by the way. It was kind of annoying, and yeah. The... Yeah, the, the tasks, basically... I mean, as an example, there was... I think there might have been several times where I had to enter a passcode, and each time it was my first guess. Basically, you know, one of the times I was literally just trying it out just to see it's, just, it's not going to work, but just to see, and it worked. And that was just, okay, why? That, I really didn't think that was going to work. The bosses are also quite creepy designs, very memorable. And some of the fights are also memorable. I would say that the last one I found to be one of the easiest ones, but that might also be because I just 
I felt certain that I wouldn't need the guns after that, so I just, yeah, shot it as many times as I could. I would also say that at least one of them seemed like a really strange, basically you just constantly had to dodge it and then attack it once successfully and that was it so you know after a couple of failed attempts I beat it in one attempt 30 seconds or something so yeah the weapons are basically there's again a focus on the melee weaponry you do get guns a pistol a shotgun and that's all I'm going to give you. And like in the fourth game, the room, there's not a lot of ammo. I mean, you can find ammo, but you can't carry a whole lot. And yeah, basically, you know, if you're going to shoot, make make those bullets count. Otherwise, just, you know, try to get close and attack with you get a knife a steel pipe and an axe. The cool thing is all three can also be used to get past some areas. You know, I already mentioned the axe hacking. You can pry open doors with the steel pipe and you can cut through certain fabrics with the knife. You go to some of the same areas in this maybe a little little more than in the other games I would say and like you'll be going back to an area that you've already been to and then getting into a completely new area there are some situations where you have to really hammer on you know quick attack or heavy attack to get out of a situation and some of these are nicely exciting though I came across at least one that just did not seem to work that was a little annoying the overall plot is going to bother some people but I think I basically understand it now Big props to Kiramid Head for helping me understand. It's okay, and it does work as a Silent Hill plot. And it isn't the movie's plot, which I am eternally grateful for. And if this is the first review you ever see of a Silent Hill game and you have no idea what the key ingredients are. Briefly, basically, isolated location. And though it seems like it should be quaint, it really isn't. It's very... it's abandoned and you kind of get that feeling of... you know, it wasn't just... like, it wasn't shut down. It was just abandoned. Like, what? happened here, you know, people just up and left, or they were removed, you know, and you find some leftovers of battles that have gone on. Maybe more so in this than in the others. And, you know, you come across grotesque sights, there are grotesque sounds, the atmosphere is key. Basically, if you aren't being attacked, it you know, if, if you aren't currently seeing something that you have to fight, you know, you feel like it could show up at any time, and in this it really can. You know, you come across holes in the wall and, you know, suddenly something crawls through it. You might not even see it, you might just kind of sense that there is something. And... the music is also we can get a I guess rock 
song specifically for this, and it's great. And I think that's more or less what there is to say. The dialogue is okay, the voice acting is above average. The graphics, they're nice, but the faces and movements and such, I don't know, I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's just something about them. It reminded me somewhat of Robert Zemeckis animation, you know, his A Christmas Carol, the one with Jim Carrey, Beowulf. You don't completely believe that these beings you're seeing are alive in that. In this, it's more that, I don't know, they, they don't seem capable of, you know, making you feel or seeming like they're feeling more than one or two emotions, you know. Alex essentially always looks utterly confounded, and like he doesn't know what the word confounded means. <sighs> they show teeth a lot, like talk like this. Yeah, the eyes are relatively nice, and some of the movements do seem natural, though a number of them don't. And about the characters, you do basically get into this and care about what happens to the people, though you don't know that much about them. And the plot twist is pretty reasonable, though I would say this game left me more confused than any of the other, you know, the first four, so... I would also say that because of the ease of the tasks, it did not feel as epic or as big as the others. Because it simply wasn't... I, I also hardly ever had to think hard or look very hard to find the way to go, you know. There were, you know, a couple of times where I wasn't entirely sure which direction to go, and I just went around trying things, and then I found it, you know. I was never... I never felt completely lost in the game, and that's something that's important for a Silent Hill game to do to you, you know. But the psychology is sound, and it does hit on something that, you know, the first four didn't. You know, each of these games really do make you think about something that you might not automatically think about, and that other survival horror games might not make you think about. One last thing about the tasks, just to help explain, I am really usually not good at puzzles at all. I usually have a quite a bit of trouble with that aspect. So, yeah, the fact that I completed them with this much ease, yeah. It also just at times seems like the game is really scared you're going to quit on it. Like, there are areas where you, you know, moderately large, medium large, that really just every couple of steps they're giving you an option to, like if there are several levels to it, like you can climb something, there's not just, you know, one set of stairs, there are like two or three, you know, you can't walk very far without being able to either turn left or right, and a way up or down is going to be right there. That really did not seem necessary. I could understand if they were going to flood those areas with enemies. Also, sometimes you will want to run away from enemies instead of fighting them. Do be aware that some of them follow you, including through doors, and like, if you hop over somewhere, they might also be able to, so yeah. But, 
yeah, they don't really flood those areas with enemies, so it just kind of seems like they're really... And that might also explain the tasks instead of puzzles. And that is basically it. The... When you shoot, you enter a first-person mode, and I think the camera is entirely free. I never really had time to test it, because when I wanted to shoot something, I wanted to make sure to shoot it now, instead of two seconds from now, because it might have rushed up on me. Also, you can do, you know, like um, pistol whips, I guess, with the weapons, you know, just right-click or do heavy attack, whichever that is set to, and it'll basically, you know, hit them if they get too close, so you're not completely helpless in that kind of situation. Also on the enemies, you, some of them have, you know, you basically do have to have a strategy, because they have these certain methods of attack where, you know, they might attack you like three times in a row and yeah, you you'll want to dodge at least one or two of those, you know, they can also knock you down and you have to get up really quickly and I think that basically covers everything, so This was my review of Silent Hill Homecoming. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.